All right, so where I left off, I was working on color correcting this mound of chicken wings. I was in color balance. And this is my favorite one because it's kind of magical. I can slide the midtones towards the cyan, towards the blue. And it's going to be different for each reference because it depends how that reference was photographed, right? If it was photographed by warm lights, I need to change it to this kind of cooler setting. Now my shadows, and Alexia, this goes to your point. If you split your color balance, you start with midtones, you get it close, but then you push your shadows in the, the opposite direction of your highlights, it will build more contrast in the image in color than it had originally. So if I take this color range and I shift the shadows towards blues, and towards cyans, right? But then I go to highlights and I shift the highlights towards reds and yellows. I'm gonna get more dimension across it because anywhere that's lit, like brighter than 50% gray is gonna go warm and anything that's darker than 50% gray is gonna go bluish and it's gonna make it seem more round than it was before I did that, right? So this was it just after levels, but color balance gives me a lot more dimension. So I'll show that again. Before color balance, everything was just kind of different oranges and browns. But with color balance, you can actually build more color in. So now I've got purple. I've got kind of these deep maroons. I've even got dark blue shadows along with those kind of golden yellow highlights. So color balance really is a wonderful tool. And it doesn't hurt your pixels as long as you don't push it too far in any one direction. Okay, last, the big guns, adjustments, hue saturation. Do you guys notice how all of my tool windows are so big now? So this happens when you're on the browser and you hit Command Plus or Command Minus. It will zoom in or out on all your tools. So good to know. So I just try to keep the browser at 100%. But then when I want to zoom in on my actual art, I have to click on the art window and then zoom in or out. So that happens. It can be fixed. Don't worry. Okay, now I'm looking at hue saturation. I'm just going to shift the hue this way and that way. And neither of them is great, but I think a little bit towards the red is a little bit better. All right. So now I've color adjusted it and lighting adjusted it. Now I need to cut it out cleanly. So we're going to use that same tool. I'm going to use my magic wand. But I'm going to use a pixel. This time I think I can be a little bit stronger. I'll, I'll do 12 pixels. Just so I don't have to do it over and over again. You can zoom in and see it. And now as I hit delete, it's going to bite away at that edge. And even at 12, I think I need to do it more than once. So I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. Just waiting to catch up with me. And then I'm going to select that empty space again with contiguous turned off. And now I'm going to hit it a couple more times. I don't want it to turn into something too soft, but I don't want that halo anymore. Okay. Next, this looks weird, right? This kind of, it's actually the lip of the pasta from this layer. How can I make that work and transition? I can actually use it. And instead of just using it where it already is, I'm going to do something called internal compositing, which can be really helpful, especially after you've already color corrected. So all of this is going to get hidden. But what if I take it all of this, except maybe the parsley, and I select it in its layer, and then I duplicate it. This is called internal compositing. I'm making my own element from what already exists. Then I can move it. I can flip it. I'm going to turn it into clouds. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to select outside of it. I'm going to make this really strong because I want this to be like atmospheric. I'm going to make 45 pixels. And I'm going to select around it, and then I'm going to delete. So all those hard edges are gone. What's another way I can do that? 
I can use the eraser tool, which is very helpful for this. I'm going to use a large eraser at 0% hardness at 100% opacity. And I'm just going to start getting rid of that hard edge. And if I have my tablet and I turn it to be pressure sensitive, just like it could for the brush, then I can really control where I soften it, what goes away, and this becomes what's called a texture overlay. It's not fully opaque. This is just kind of the atmosphere and the mist that will go over my mountains. So now I can play with internally compositing that. I can grow it. I'll race away a little bit more. With my soft 100% eraser. And now I'm going to edit, free transform it. Maybe hold down shift, distort it. I can warp it. It's not the highest pixel resolution, so I don't need too much of it. And it's just previewing it for me now because I'm in a transform box. But let's say I put it something like this. Right. So now you can start to see how it looks like mist that the pizza's settled in, which could be fun. I can also just go back to this layer and use that 100% opacity eraser with a soft edge to tone that down. Then I can add in the clouds or not. There are my clouds. So that's kind of nice. But internal compositing is when you take something from an element you already have and you use it somewhere else. I can do the same thing with the chicken here because I want to get rid of that hard edge. So I have my eraser tool at 100% opacity. Come on. Stick with me. And then I can use that eraser to just erase out that hard edge. and kind of showcase the spaghetti a little bit. Like so. Then I decide where that spaghetti noodle is going to come out from. Let's have it go all the way in front. Like that. And have one tuck under there. And now these are starting to integrate, right? Without too much work. It's just because their colors already match. I can also let a little bit more of this mound of, of spaghetti sauce blend in with those chicken hills. What about this burger? What if I move it back behind the spaghetti and then start erasing away from the spaghetti? Is there a way to blend that in in a way that works? Instead of just having this huge hamburger on top of everything. Right? It's basically the same thing. I could erase away from the... Actually, that looks a little bit better. I can erase away from the hamburger, or I can erase away from the spaghetti. It's just what order do I put them in. Has anyone ever put spaghetti on their hamburger? I'm always putting french fries on my hamburger, but I haven't tried spaghetti. Sometimes to get a sense of where you want to blend them, you can just take the opacity of the layer down a little bit and see what kind of overlaps you have. So maybe right there is the limiting factor. That's too much. 
Go back in my history. I knew using fast food was going to be goofy, so it's got to be prepared for this. Now, you just don't want to erase too far. That's why we want lots of overlap, but you don't want to push it beyond where you can cut it out cleanly, which for me is about right there. Okay. So I've got that kind of layered up. And I can work with it and get its subtleties and, and work with the color. And there's some other tools we'll be using. But I've got my background mountains for sure. Now let's move in to what's covering stuff up. So this is the tricky one. This is the middle ground. You see how sharp and in focus that is. The problem is this doesn't have like a clean background around it, right? So how do I... How do I do this? Well, I can use the magic wand with contiguous in some places. And I'm going to turn on the feather to only three pixels because I want it to be really sharp. But I can find it like in one place and then hit delete and then delete a few more times. Hit another place. Then delete. Hit another place. And if I want to add to my selection, I can hold down shift. As long as I'm checking that it's not actually going into the, the duck itself. It's a duck. I have to remember that. Turkey is home cooking. Duck is fast food. Because ducks can fly. So by holding down shift, I'm adding to the selection. But I'm just careful not to let it go into the bird. And then I can hit delete, and it will feather all of it. Right, and then I can hit Command D to deselect. Now, what about this? I have like cranberry or something back here. But I've already erased from the edge pretty clearly, so now I'm just going to use my lasso and weasel my way in between. You can also set your lasso to feather. And I might set that to, to three pixels. But I just want to remember that it's there, so if I want a super clean cut out that's not at all softened, I want to take that back down to zero. I can also, this is a fantasy landscape, you can always just find your own edge. You can always just draw your own cutout. You don't need to, to stick with what's there. So for instance, I don't have all of that duck leg, so I'm just going to draw my own boundary on it and then cut that out. Now for the rest, I don't want this, so I can just cut inside of it, and I have a three pixel feather. And this is where using a tablet really helps me, but it takes some practice to get comfortable outlining and drawing with that tablet. And I'll do it in one chunk, hit delete a few times to feather it. Then Command-D to deselect. And now I've got a shadow underneath it. And maybe I want some of that shadow, so I'm just going to loosely cut around that. With that three pixel feather. And then grab this little debris and get all of that and delete it up. All right, now... What's wrong with that duck? Doesn't it look like it's lit and colored in a different world than the rest? It's because I haven't done adjustments yet, right? And usually I sh would say do adjustments before, but because I had so many colorful things around it, I kind of needed to cut it back in order to see how to make it match. So I start with levels. Do I want it brighter or do I want it darker? I would have thought darker, but seeing it, in its place, I want it to be more in the middle ground, so I want it a little bit brighter in its midtones. I'm going to limit its highlights just a tiniest bit. Do I want to limit its shadows? No. I'm not going to goose its highlights, or I'm going to lose pixels. I'm not going to strengthen its shadows, or I'm going to lose pixel definition. Instead, I just use that midtone slider. Next, color balance. 
Start with the mid-tones.